Hi everyone, my name is Fabio and welcome to another Red Hat Consulting Whiteboard video. Hi everyone, my name is Alexandra Machado. So Fabio, we have a lot of interesting things to discuss today. And one of the things that really grabs my attention is this big number written here, 35,000. What Great. does it mean? Great point. So 35,000 is the number of decisions that everyone makes every single day. So can you believe that? It's almost like one decision every two seconds. So one, two, you just made a decision and I hope it's to keep watching. <laughs> That's amazing. So tell me something. I actually don't remember the 35,000 decisions that I made today and every, every other second. Uh, how does that work? So good question. It turns out that science has been explaining the past few decades that about 80% of those decisions that we make, we actually make them unconsciously so we don't remember all of them. That's amazing. Um, and very fascinating. So can you give a real-life example of what that looks like? Yeah, so for example, there is a number that in Austria it's 99% and in Denmark it's 4%. What do you think that is? Who? My best guess will be German speakers. <laughs> That's very clever, but it's actually the number of organ donors. It turns out that in Austria you are already an organ donor, you have to opt out, whereas in Denmark it's an opt-in system and that makes a big difference because just this magic word called default influences us to make a decision as important as being an organ donor or not. And there is something called the default bias which is one of these forces that actually influence our decisions one way or another. That's very powerful and it actually affects the future of people who are waiting for, for for a donor, so that's amazing. Um, we also know that our lives is like, we have technology everywhere, right? And we have a smartphone almost tied to our fingers. Uh, and even on my way here, I actually use a, a map application to get me here that told me turn right, turn left, and do it now. Uh, how does that like relate to the decision-making process? Good point. So those decisions that you used to make them, like turning left and turn right, they are being made right now by technology. So you've pretty much delegated some of your decisions, so some of the 35,000 decisions are now being made by your technology. And that's fascinating because this is what I call digital decisions. There are two types of digital decisions, some that you fully delegate to technology and some that technology actually augments us. So we make the technology using some data that's on our phone or in, on a wearable device or on a computer. Faya, this is a fascinating concept and I know that you also wrote a book called Digital Notch. Um, and I would like to know the difference between actually digital decisions and digital notch. Good question. So that book is very much inspired by another book called Nudge from Richard Taylor and Castlestein. So Richard Taylor got the Nobel Prize in 2017 for combining psychology and economics on the book called Nudge. So the default, it's actually a nudge. So by putting the default as people being organ donors by default, you actually influence people to make that decision. In the digital world, we also have an invisible hand that nudges people into making decisions. Mm. It's like decisions influenced through technology. That's amazing. So that's exactly what you mean by digital nudge. Yes, precisely. And it, digital nudge as well, it's a movement that talks about the morals and the ethics around those um, little nudges that we do with people. Because we could nudge people for good, or we could nudge people to make a decision that they don't need and that they don't want to. So I talk a lot about the fact that a digital nudge should be something that influences people to do something that they need to or that they want to. And that's amazing. Uh, do you have a, another, I, I, I love examples, so do you have any example of like what uh, nudge for good uh, means? Good. And I like the term nudge for good as well because it's, uh, I have a very good example for you. It's one called safe cap. So think about a cap that a truck driver can actually put on. This is a project from my friend Vico. He was awarded with some innovation awards all over the world. And it's a cap that has technology embedded that can detect when a truck driver is about to fall asleep. And then it prevents the, the sleep because that sleep can actually cause a crash. So it's actually technology saving lives. That's amazing. 
Yeah, so uh, more than that, like I know that you've been doing some work with UNICEF, right? Alexandra leads the social innovation projects at Red Hat and uh, some work that you did at UNICEF that has to do with data, does that have anything to do with the concept? Oh yeah, it has everything to do. So um, actually we work, uh, we did a collaboration with UNICEF um, through one of our new offerings in consulting, well, it, for a few years now, uh, called Innovation Labs. And we, you actually lead the Open Innovation Labs team in LATAM, so you're very aware of that we actually did uh, we helped them with one of their big data solutions and and we actually took that data and presented it to different stakeholders so that they could make more informed decisions to actually problems affecting children around the world and we did it through a use case uh, for school connectivity in Colombia so yeah it was a very uh, inspiring work that we did with them Awesome, so this is definitely a digital nudge for good. It's big data for good and it's technology for good. So if I want to know a bit more about how Red Hat and UNICEF work together to influence those stakeholders to make decisions for good, can I find some information elsewhere? Yeah, of course. And I invite everyone to go and check it out. We'll leave it in the description, the link. But you can also search online for proof of concept, UNICEF and Red Hat. And you will actually find a whole video series of how we collaborated together. Actually, it's also the personal aspect and the processes around delivering software. So it's a very fascinating video series that you should check out. Cool. I'll definitely check it out. Proof of concept, UNICEF and Red Hat. And I think you should check it out as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm.